So, in Exodus chapter 28, this is the concluding, the concluding message concerning the will of God. And I think this is such a beautiful picture. And actually, I preached this a couple years ago. And so, but it's a good, you know, God told Peter, put them in remembrance. And it's such a beautiful picture um, concerning the will of God. And so it's five lessons from the Urim. And I was said Thuman, but Thuman, I, I Googled, so I had said it wrong all these many, many times. Thuman. Like you're thumbing for a ride? Yeah. Anybody got another way they want me to pronounce it? <laughs> Shh. Old English. <laughs> I know. This, is, this amazes me that there's so many different. And then when you get down to some of these gems here, like... Uh, uh, agate, uh, agate, uh, agate, uh, and there's so many different ways they pronounce these things that we just try hard and do our best. So, so this is a beautiful, beautiful picture of the Urim and Thummim concerning the will of God and the Urim and Thummim were placed within the breastplate uh, that the high priest wore. And we're going to look at this. Let's read in. And just as I said, concluding uh, uh, as we're thinking about you know, the study we did, the will of God, and how God does personally direct our steps. And it's not just a vague, like, uh, just... Figure it out for yourself according to general principles of God's word. It is as you walk with God and obey his word, then he specifically directs your steps. Sometimes you don't even, I mean, you look back and say, wow, God knew that. That's like uh, when uh, years ago I was driving back from college with Steve Ware. And we're driving like 2 o'clock in the morning, in the middle of the night. There's no cars anywhere. And just sitting there, Steve's driving. And I couldn't sleep because, I mean, when Steve's driving, no, you can't sleep. So all of a sudden, Steve pulls over into the passing lane. There's no cars coming. I mean, because it's a one way. It's the highway. But there's, you can't see a car anywhere. And I look over at him. Look over at him. And I'm just going to say, what are you doing? And we went over just a little rise, and there was a pallet right square in the middle of the lane we were in. And there's no way, there is no way we would have missed that if he hadn't pulled over. And it was like one of those times we both just got to chill down our spine. We were going, unreal, unreal. I said, did you, you, it's like, you couldn't see that. No, I couldn't see it. It's just unreal. I said, well, what was you pulling over for? He said, I just felt like I'm bored. I'll pull over. I'll just something. And just a reminder that the Lord directs us. He knows exactly what's happening, and he directs our steps. So, in Exodus 28 and verse 29 and 30 says, And Aaron shall bear the names of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart when he goeth in unto the holy place for a memorial before the Lord continually. Thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart when he goeth in before the Lord and Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that help us to uh, see 
uh, beautiful things in your word and that you'd speak to our hearts. We're thankful that uh, your will is for us is from a heart of love and just pray that you bless your word. Pray your Holy Spirit would teach us and your Holy Spirit would guide me. In Jesus' name, amen. The breastplate of judgment, we will back up in a little bit. Uh, it's covered with the jewels representing the 12 tribes. But it's the breastplate of judgment because Jesus has taken our judgment upon himself. You know that this all of the high priest is all pointing to the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus has fulfilled this, and he is our priest. And he is the only priest for today. And you've heard me say many, many times when you hear of a religion that has a priesthood, pretty much know it's a false religion. That I was reading the book uh, uh, Unveiling Grace, and it was about a, a family that left Mormonism. At 30 years, 30 years they were in Mormonism, and he was a priest. And his son was on a, his mission work. He went to Florida. And that was the Lord directing his steps because he had gotten sick. He was supposed to go overseas somewhere. But because he had gotten sick, they wanted to keep him in the States. And he went down to Florida. And he was out doing his mission work with his buddy. And they ran into a pastor that... Uh, witness to them, got them reading the Bible, and led him to the Lord. And he started witnessing to his parents and just really gracious, lovingly, just poured the love on his parents. Like, so thankful. He told his parents, so thankful you taught me about God and, and took me to church and all this. Um, but, you know, I've received the Lord Jesus as my personal Savior, and they're like, what? Well, his dad has been a priest, a priest, and, you know, high up in the Mormon church. And he got his dad reading the Bible. And his dad uh, tells some of his story in the book that he came to the story in, uh, is it Luke 18, Luke 18 or 19? Luke, Luke 18, where... Uh, two went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. Pretty amazing that this guy, his wife taught at Brigham Young University. They were educated, very educated people. He's a priest uh, high up in the, in the, and he really didn't know the Bible. Didn't know the Bible. Didn't know about Jesus. And here he's a priest, and he started reading the Bible for himself, and it says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And he's reading that thinking, yeah, that's the way I am. That's the way I am. He actually approached this parable and thought that when he started into it, he thought that, yeah, that's me. I'm doing good. I'm, I serve people. I serve God more than other people. I'm, I'm more righteous than other people because he had been caught up in the Mormonism. He just thought he was a great, wonderful, godly person. And uh, God opened his eyes. Uh, God opened his eyes. But we know that Hebrews clearly tells us Jesus is the fulfillment of the priesthood. He is the only priest. And for Catholicism, Mormonism, to come along and say, oh, we, we have our priesthood. You've heard me say this so many times. It's just it's blasphemy. It's wrong. And so the priest here, Where's this breastplate? And inside the breastplate is the Urim and Thummim. And we know that this Urim and Thummim, uh, Joshua used it to find the will of God. 
Uh, Saul used it to find the will of God. And Ezra, Ezra mentioned uh, that they should not eat of the most holy things till there stood up a priest with a Urim and Thummim. Uh, Urim meant, it meant light. Right? Light, it, mean, it means Urim and Thummim, and, and, and Thummim means light and perfections. Light and perfections. Well, the Lord Jesus is our light and perfection. And he, um, he leads us. He guides us. Today, our high priest has stood up. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we don't need um, anything but to follow the Lord Jesus and have the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, guide us. Um, and to obey his word is how we are led into the will of God. But as you think of, as you think of the Urim and Thummim, I want to mention five things, five things concerning the will of God. And number one, the will of God comes from a heart of love. The will of God comes from, maybe we should say, God's heart of love for his people. When you read about the breastplate, and you know we did this just a couple years ago. If you look in, uh, back up to verse 15, it's describing that breastplate. Uh, Thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment with cunning work. It's a lot of work, a lot of love. Really, I believe it's love. God planned this out from a heart of love, and there's all this work that goes into it. Cunning work. Make this beautiful breastplate. Uh, it's going to be filled with gems. And do you remember when we studied this, we said that this is like the greatest family uh, piece of jewelry ever. You know, mother's... Mothers like to have those mother's rings, or they'll have a necklace with the little uh, gems for each child, or they might have a bracelet. Well, here, God had the high priest wearing the breastplate that had gems for the 12 tribes, and it was out of God's heart of love for his people, they had this uh, breastplate on the high priest. It's made with cunning work. After the work of the ephod, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, and of fine twine linen. Fine twine linen, uh, picture the righteousness of the saints. Uh, we are made righteous through the Lord Jesus Christ. The gold was a, a deity. Uh, blue uh, speaks of heaven, that the Lord Lord took our sins upon him to bring us to heaven, uh, to take us to heaven. Uh, purple represents royalty uh, and shows reverence. Verse 16, it says, four square it shall be being doubled. Four squares makes me think of Ephesians 3. Look over, peek over at Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, the lost prayer. Lost prayer of the church. How often do we pray this prayer? Ephesians 3, begin verse 14. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. And then, this is what makes me think of four square. And because I'm thinking of this breastplate that is on the heart, it, it hangs on the heart of the priest, and it represents the people of God being on the heart of God. 
verse 18 says, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. So the breastplate was uh, to be four square. It shall be being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof, and a span shall be the breadth thereof. It would be about uh, nine inches square. And thou shalt set it in settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be, and we won't go through, but we know that it's all set in stones because God's people are gems. God's people are beautiful to him. God's people are valuable to him. And they're uh, set in different um, pattern that God chose. And they will count the colors, uh, complement one another. Uh, each has a different luster, different color. Each gem has a different personality. And God loves his people. And here, in that breastplate that hangs on the high priest, God places the Urim and Thummim, puts that in there, and it's just showing that the will of God comes from God's heart of love for his people. And second thing we see about the will of God is... Oh, we didn't read, uh, uh, just to mention that verse 29, we did read, but it says that this breastplate was going to be for a memorial before the Lord continually. A memorial before the Lord continually. And we are always on the Lord's heart. And secondly, the will of God is found in Jesus, our high priest. You want to know the will of God? Young person looking for God's will in their life, you cannot find the will of God until you come to the Lord Jesus and receive him as your Savior. And that, God's word tells us clearly that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and should receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Is that one of our memory verses that we got to brush up on? Did, do we have that in our list? Um, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come. It'll probably come up later on our list there, because I need to brush up on it. So, it's God's will for us to be saved. Then Thessalonians tells us uh, that this is the will of God, even your sanctification. And But you got to come to the Lord Jesus to do God's will, to be saved. And then you've got to walk with the Lord Jesus and obey the Spirit of God as, it guide, as he guides you in order to know the will of God. In order to know the will of God, you've got to follow Jesus. Somebody that, oh, I'm not going to go to church. I'm not going to read my Bible. Uh, I'm not going to do what the Lord Jesus tells me to do. They're not going to know God's will. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I've got this great plan. I've got this big uh, thing I'm going to do. And, well, it's not God's will if you're not following Jesus. And the people of God, uh, the, the high priest, the will of God was on the heart of the high priest. And... We find God's will. We find God's will in the Lord Jesus and following the Lord Jesus uh, for salvation, for sanctification, for service. You find the will of God in the Lord Jesus, and it's on the heart of the Lord Jesus. Uh, thirdly, thirdly, the will of God was Jesus' all-consuming goal. Just things that we learn about the will of God. The will of God was Jesus' all-consuming God. So when the, when the high priest went into the tabernacle to serve, he had that 
will of God, he had that Urim and Thummim on his heart continually. And, you know, the will of God, the will of God is why Jesus came to earth. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And talking about the Lord Jesus, it says, uh, verse 5, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices, for sin hast thou, uh, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, Oh, God. And the Lord Jesus came to do God's will, and God's will was his meat. You see in John chapter 4, John chapter 4 and verse 34, Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. And if you turn over to chapter 5, John 5, and verse 30, says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. And in chapter 6, Verse 38 says, the Lord Jesus said, For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. But the Lord Jesus came to do his Father's will. It was all about obeying his father and if we're going to be like Lord Jesus then we don't want to do our own will we don't want to do our own thing we want to do God's will and we're being like the Lord Jesus in uh, doing God's will and following the Lord Jesus he'll show us how to do God's will and we know that the Lord Jesus prayed in Matthew 26, 39, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. So it should be our consuming goal. And just to do, to do the Lord's will. Uh, another, a fourth thing, a fourth thing we learn about the will of God when we see the beautiful picture of the Urim and Thummim put inside the Beautiful breastplate. You know, God's will is beautiful. That's not what I have written down. Do I have that written down? I mean, the whole thing, the whole thing is a statement that God's will is beautiful. It's precious. It's on the heart of God. And there's nothing better in life. Nothing better in life. Uh, life is no purpose. Life has no beauty. If you're not going to follow God and love God, live for God and do his will. But the fourth thing is, uh, the will of God calls us to prayer. The will of God calls us to prayer because, as we read in our passage here, the breastplate, which has the urn and thumb and tucked inside there, is on top of what? It's on top of the ephod. The ephod is a prayer vest. You're gonna have, can you find God's will without prayer? No, you're not going to find God's will without prayer. And this just makes a statement that um, we have to pray. We have to be men and women of prayer um, individually, but I also believe as a church 
I showed Corey, I was at that, because Corey from Palmer, uh, I met my wife, well, somebody's going to hear me talking, if anybody listens to Palmer, this is to encourage you, not, just, just uh, you got to have prayer meeting. Uh, they, I heard they canceled prayer meeting uh, because of COVID or whatever, because they didn't have, they're looking for a pastor, they don't have a pastor. Well, if you want to know the will of God, it's so clear that the Urim and Thummim went on the heart, the heart of the high priest, the heart of God, the heart of the Lord Jesus is prayer. It went on top of that prayer vest, the ephod. And, you know, any church has got to have a heart for prayer. Any, if they're going to find God's will, uh, any individual has to have a heart for prayer if they're going to find God's will. So, clear picture here that the will of God, the will of God is all wrapped up in prayer. And then lastly, um, a beautiful picture, beautiful picture, Number five, the will of God tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. The will of God, well, where do you get that from? Well, let's read back in Exodus 28. Exodus 28, beautiful picture here is that the breastplate was chained. It was chained to the high priest. This breastplate was chained to the high priest, and then the Urim and Thummim, which they used to determine God's will, was put inside the breastplate. But as you start in verse 22, it says, And thou shalt make upon the breastplate chains at the ends of wreathen work of pure gold. Thou shalt make upon the breastplate two rings of gold, and shall put the two rings on the two ends of the breastplate. Thou shalt put the two wreathen chains of gold in the two rings which are on the ends of the breastplate, and the other two ends of the two wreathen chains. Thou shalt fasten in the two ouches, which are settings, and put them on the shoulder pieces of the ephah before it. And thou shalt make two rings of gold. There's a lot said here about chaining the breastplate to the high priest. It says, Thou shalt make two rings of gold, and thou shalt put them upon the two ends of the breastplate and the border thereof, which is in the side of the ephod inward. And two other rings of gold thou shalt make, and shalt put them on the two sides of the ephod underneath, toward the fore part thereof, over against the other coupling thereof, above the curious girdle of the ephod. And they shall bind the breastplate by the rings there are, this God's people are bound to his heart. The, our high priest, I mean, this is a picture in the Old Testament of God's love for his, the children of Israel, but it is a picture today because Jesus is our high priest that we are bound to his heart. He loves us so much. We're chained. We're chained to his heart. And then that Urim and Thummim are put inside that breastplate, and on top of that ephod of prayer, and it just tells us that, you know, nothing will separate us from the love of God. Nothing separate us from the love of God. That breastplate was chained there. And it's interesting, too, that um, the ephod, oh, how did it go back um, when the, Oh, the two shoulder pieces that the ephod, which is the thing that uh, in the breastplate, it didn't hang around the neck. The weight, was, the weight was born on the shoulders, which is a beautiful picture that uh, you, uh, the Lord's uh, yoke is easy, his burden is light. You're not like something chained around his neck. You're what is chained, you're chained to his heart, and he bears you on his shoulders, and he loves you, 
and he has a perfect will for you, and that will flows out of his heart of love. And so when things happen that, it's like, well, this wasn't in my plan, you can know that the Lord's will, things that he puts you through, tests he puts you through, it is out of a heart of love. So we're concluding our study on the will of God, and I thought that's just a good way to me uh, to conclude it, thinking about how wonderful the will of God is and that it comes from uh, our Savior's heart of love. And we'll stop right there.